Good afternoon, everyone. Ring of Fire Eclipse, bending light similar to the Aztec cornerstone. The fourth turning, where do we sit in 2023? BRICS reviewing global payment system bypassing the dollar. Global events make a little more sense. How Americans respond to the inflation crisis. Giving up what? Amazon's going to charge you a buck to start returning things. At the same time, calls out stop consuming meat but hey to add your uranium stocks are on a tear as the rest of the market contracts hey in reviewing last week the ring of fire eclipse I noticed something in my camera too interesting on the symmetry of light being bent around the moon and at the same time if we're looking at Aztec the sunstone do you see any similarities perhaps because everywhere you look the completion of cycles seems to be at our doorstep images from the 1960s being recirculated to spread the exact same message times up and what type of time do you think we're talking about here? Cyclical time, obviously. Strauss and Howe, the fourth turning. And if we look at previous timelines of the fourth turning, 1775 to 81, 1861 to 65, 41 to 45. And where do we sit? Did it indeed start in 2021 or 22? Or is this year the beginning from 2023 to 2028? It's an unknown, but we are into a cycle now. A lot of people have forgotten the reset, although it's been renamed. The same set of effects could be pandemic, could be war, could be inflation, could be supply chain stoppage. But this is ongoing and continuing, relabeled. So you forgot about this right in front of us. If you're going to reset the economy on the globe, you're going to have to move to BRICS, a new global payment system. Now, interestingly, the massive push forward was just this year to circumvent SWIFT. And it must be incredibly close to launching this parallel standard because we need not look any further than the possible stoppage of black gold across the Middle East, which would disrupt the economies of India and China stopping on a dime the movement forward of the new gold-backed currencies and as I say that and I put this possibility out before and so many responded and said well China gets a lot of oil from Russia and I said well that would include India also Wow, then how do you have so much oil coming from Russia to feed the growing economies and voracious economies of India and China? You don't. They could feed one perhaps, but if Middle Eastern oil stops, then all go down. If you wanted to stop the formation and the forward movement of the BRICS currency or basket thereof, including the cornerstone of gold in the Shanghai Gold Exchange, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, if you could take down China's oil supply or cut it in half because 50% would have to go to India, thereby causing an economic implosion, you could slow that down. So that previous SWIFT article would be delayed by weeks, days, months, years, who knows, but it would definitely work on the side of, let me guess, the US dollar. Canada hopes to boost regulation on natural health products otherwise known as supplements. This stretches across the border from Canada and the United States, both. And have you heard about nictotinamide mononucleotide, NMN? It's a derivative of vitamin B niacin, a precursor to NAD+, a compound for muscle regeneration, metabolism, and energy production in your body. And as we navigate into this grand solar minimum, food shortages, economic shifts, and our health are paramount. And this represents a tool in the adaptation toolkit, offering benefits like 
energy enhancement and anti-aging. But the FDA's potential reclassification threatens this access. We're all going to have to navigate the future with the changes. Give Black Forest NMN a try. Remember, prepping out, two is one and one is none. Lucky, buy two, get one completely free, which makes it three. Click on that link in the description box below. And now on with the video. And as we're looking at China Treasury holdings, that's already going to be struggling anyway. This is older news, but you know China's been ditching along with so many other nations U.S. Treasury holdings. They're rebuying them through the back door here and just reinflating our debt to continue to repurchase without causing such a ripple in the pond. But the momentum of growth in East Asia sliding as well. If we look at 2021, obviously the high point for all of those economies, except Thailand, which is 2024, seems the highest there. But whatever's reached on the peak and then slid down is reflected here by the World Bank of East Asia and Pacific, their October 2023 economic update. And might I add, bypassing SWIFT will allow all of these nations to trade amongst themselves outside the dollar. And we wouldn't want that. Speaking of dollars, let's talk about inflation in India for a minute. Food price inflation, this comes off of WION News. Sugar, 55%. Sauces, condiments, 28%. Olive oil, 38%. Frozen veggies, almost 25%. So everything else across the way would continue to rise. And you're seeing it yourself. How much inflation are you truly seeing compared to the numbers they're putting out as the quote unquote official? And this one popping out of the UK. Attention customers due to customer limits now in place. This entry is closed. Use our store main entry. Gee, have they gone to soft rationing already? I wonder what that would look like in the United States when it comes. It'll be preceded by messaging first and, whoa, hold on, scratch the record. Here we go. World Health Organization orders governments to ban meat products to prevent the next pandemic. Okay. And off of Euro News, Pope tells young people eating meat is part of a self-destructive trend. And it's termed as tendency to self-destruction. Again, I'm waiting for explanations on how that works. But anyway, the messaging, you know, coming in tandem at the same time as a lot of other soon-to-be restrictions are put in place. So how are Americans going to respond to the inflation crisis? This is as of April 2023. And will it continue is the question to really ask. Is U.S. respondents on this? Spending less on non-essential items. So that's going to pull money out of the greater economy, causing more contraction. So instead, maybe you'll wait for that second pair of jeans or that pair of shoes. But the free spending days are getting curtailed. Cut back on non-essential journeys, the third one down. So, you know, saving petrol in my vehicle. So what happens if the Middle East oil gets cut off and... You know, gas goes to $12, $15 per gallon. Uh, that would probably jump to the number one position. Don't go out for dinner or lunch. A lot of people have been doing that anyway for such a long time. And how do you use less gas and electricity at home? Light candles? I'm not sure. The lucky 11, I'm going to call that at the bottom. The lucky 11 did not change their behavior at all. But one thing about behavior... People are like a school of fish. They move in unison. They bend in tandem. They jump at the same dangers and shadows lurking beneath. So when will the masses realize what's going on and start panic buying everything? Not a lot of people have even been moved to action over the last two weeks of events we've seen. They're like, ah, it's happened before. No worries. I'll just keep going on about my day. And that's good for now while the oil continues to flow. But once it stops or is curtailed, and I'm not saying it's going to be, but it already seems to be a card laid on the table being played right this second. You can only ex seeing it like ever widening in its rings and sphere of influence. So it, as I believe, part of what we're seeing across the world right now is to interfere or hinder 
the amount of oil that China can get and import, that will disrupt this movement of BRICS currencies. Also India, South Africa, and some of these other giant behemoths as well, Brazil, I know they produce oil, Mexico produces oil, I mean there's a lot of oil producing nations, Venezuela, etc. But once you stop the Middle Eastern oil flows, even the United States would be greatly wrecked internally. So think about that one single move and how long would it be from the announcement of such measures. OPEC unanimously is, okay, no more oil going off to this country or that country. You're now on the naughty list. You can imagine BRICS reversing it and going, no, you're on the naughty list, no oil for you. Now, once that happens, what do you think the delay factor would be between normal days that you see and suddenly lines for out the supermarkets, out the petrol stations, they're just waiting to get necessities? There will be a delay effect, and once the masses realize, you're going to have 200 million people moving and doing the same thing in the same day or two. Think Christmas season times 10 or 50. They're all going to want that essential. It's not going to be a TV this time. It's going to be food, medicine, and fuel. Ups the ante quite a bit. Are we ready for that? Because I look at the credit contraction, and we're below that zero line. The only other time it's happened it is the great financial crisis. Read into that what you want. That's from the Federal Reserve Board. And also, clothing is now the first choice for secondhand shoppers. So if we go back to the Americans responding to inflation crisis, spend less on non-essentials, and that fits right into the clothing and shoes category right there at the top. All the other ones, you know, are just second hands off of Amazon, etc., state sales. But those first two give you an indication that, indeed, spending habits have shifted. So you got to wonder how clothing manufacturers and consumer goods on the stock market, those types of companies are faring. And speaking of that, Amazon now is going to charge a dollar to return at UPS drop-off locations. Ten items to return? you got to pay ten bucks for that now. Eventually, this should move up from a dollar to five dollars to ten dollars. But in the beginning, they're going to do it at a dollar, get the reaction, and see how that moves. You know, will that help their bottom line? I don't know. There's a lot of contraction in the stock market. But don't worry. Look, Dad. Another kaboom. Your uranium stocks are on a tear. Oh, yeah. Keep smiling, family. You just made enough to go on another holiday. Well, if you're going to Europe... Mmm, their economy is in tatters. The ECB putting out a new type of currency. And I guess one day soon we'll be able to substitute those two, but one will be rougher than the other. And it was a few short years ago when super cheap air tickets, Airbnb, and the Uber lifestyle were available to all. Chilling out, seaside, ski slopes side. A moment of zen in the world of madness. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Ransom Godwin and myself talk about these issues two hours at a time Thursday nights. Join us on the Rumble channel, Adapt2030. Also the Mini Ice Age Conversation Podcast YouTube channel. We'll leave the comment boards open so you can converse with others of like mind during the show. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.